What's up developers and welcome back to a new video where we'll be diving into retrieving data with Eloquent. Quick pause, do you want to support the channel and want me to continue on creating content? Well, you can support the channel on Patreon right now where you get benefits such as a private Discord group where you can share your coding issues and other developers will help you out. If you are interested to join, the link can be found in the description down below. At this point, we've talked about Eloquent, models and Eloquent model conventions. It's finally time to dive into retrieving data from the database using Eloquent. Retrieving data in Eloquent is super easy because queries are simply built and very smooth. Retrieving data happens right inside of the controller. So let's navigate to our post controller and let's start off by cleaning our index method real quick because we don't want to return the array right now. All right. Now the easiest way is to define a variable right above the return statement, which is equal to the action we're trying to perform. We're going to start off by retrieving all posts from the database. So let's define a variable called posts. Then we got to make sure that we perform a static call to our eloquent model, which in our case will be the post class. Don't forget to hit enter right here inside the dropdown option to pull in the right use statement. Then we could easily chain a method right after it by performing a double colon followed with the all method. What this will do is simply retrieving all rows from the post model. Now next up, let's add a simple DD right below our variable. So let's say DD of the variable posts. If we save it, navigate to the browser, refresh our forward slash blog endpoint, you'll see that 202 rows have been returned to the browser. Keep in mind that whenever you use the all method, you could also use the get method. So let's replace all with get, save it, navigate back and refresh it. And right here, you see that 202 rows have been returned again. Now you might wonder what the difference is between the get and all method, since the response is exactly the same. Most of the times when using Eloquent, you will be performing some kind of condition. When using the all method, you cannot use the method chaining since it will retrieve all rows, but when you use the get method, you can add method chaining. That's why I always prefer to use the get method rather than the all method. Now Eloquent has a method that you can add, which will change the order of the data you have retrieved from the database. Every method you're trying to perform needs to happen right before the get method. So let's get right in front of it. And by default, Eloquent orders the retrieve data based on the primary key, which is the ID, in an ascending fashion. So let's change that up to descending. So let's say that we want to order by, parentheses, a method chaining, so a dash greater than sign. Inside the order by method, we have to define the column we want to order by. So in single quotes, it will be ID. Then we need to pass in a second parameter, which will be the method. In our case, it will be desk. Now I don't want to retrieve 202 rows. So what we can do right after the order by method is chain the take method, which accepts a parameter of the number of rows you want to take from the database. So in our case, let's just say that we want to retrieve 10 rows. If we save it, navigate back, refresh our endpoint, you'll see that we retrieve 10 rows. If we open it, open our first item, the original array, you'll see that the last ID, so 202, has been retrieved first. One of the most common methods you'll be using when retrieving data through Eloquent is the WHERE method. So let's navigate back and let's remove everything from the order by, and let's add the WHERE method. Don't forget, we also need to change the get method to it. The where method does accept a couple parameters. The first parameter will be the column name you want to perform the where clause on. So let's say that we want to search through the min underscore two underscore read column. And then we got a second parameter, which will be the value you want to check on. So let's say that we only want to retrieve posts where the min is to read is equal to two. If we save it and navigate back to the browser, refresh it, you'll see that we have retrieved 25 rows from the database. There is an additional parameter that we can add right inside of the where method, which should be placed in the middle. Now the value that we're going to add right here is the comparison operator. By default, the where method plays an equal sign right in between, but you can override it by well adding a new parameter. And let's say that we want to check whether it's not equal to two. If we save it, navigate back, refresh it, you'll see that the value is 177. And if we add the 25 to it, the total amount will be 202. 
at the moment we've only retrieved a couple hundred rows, well 202 to be exact. If you are working with thousands or even millions of rows, you rather want to chunk the data before you retrieve it. Larval has a pretty cool method that we could use which is the chunk method. Let's navigate back, let's remove our variable post and our DD. What the chunk method will do is basically breaking the request you're performing to the database into smaller pieces. The output will be a little bit different than what we're doing right now. So let's define our post model, colon, colon, chunk. Now the first parameter inside the chunk method will be an integer, which will define the number of rows we want to chunk it into. So let's say 25, then comma space. We got to add a callback function right here. So we're going to define a function right inside of the chunk method. So let's say function parentheses, curly braces and hit enter. The callback function needs to have a variable of all posts. So let's define a new variable right here called posts. Then inside our callback function, we could basically do whatever we want. So let's simply add a for each loop. We're going to loop over all posts as one single post. And what we're basically going to do right here is echo our post title and let's add a break. Let's save it, navigate back, refresh the browser. And as you could see, we retrieved all post titles. We could also use a couple aggregate methods, which are pretty much the same as with the query builder. So let's quickly test them out. Let's first clean up our controller a little bit. So let's define our entire chunk method. All right. Then let's define a new variable called posts again, and let's set it equal to the post model, colon, colon, get. And before we finish it off with a semicolon, let's change the count method to it, which should return the count of the number of rows we've got. So right below of it, let's add a DD of posts, save it and navigate back, refresh it. You'll see that we have retrieved a total of 202 rows. We can also sum an integer column by simply removing everything after the double colon. And what we need to do is simply add the sum method where we need to sum the values of minutes to underscore read. If we refresh our browser, you'll see that the sum is equal to 1039. Finally, we can also calculate the average where we simply need to replace sum with AVG of average, save it, navigate back, refresh it, you can see that the average minutes to read is equal to 5.1. Now, if we think about a general resource controller, we will most of the time show users all posts inside the index methods. So let's define it one more time. Let's remove everything right after our post colon colon. We're going to order everything by the updated underscore at in a desk fashion. Finally, don't forget to chain the get method to it. Before we can use this inside our blade, we obviously got to make sure that we send it back to the browser. This can simply be done by defining a second parameter inside our return statement of view, which will be an array. If we hit enter, we got to make sure that we define a key value pair. The key will be a value of posts, while the value is our variable posts. There are multiple methods on how you can send back a value to the browser, but I personally find the array the easiest method. We could even simplify the code that we have right here by simply grabbing the value of our variable posts and paste it as the value inside our key value pair. So instead of our variable post, what we then can do is remove everything above our return statement. The second method inside our research controller, which is being used to retrieve data is the show method right here, which will show one single post based on the ID as a parameter. In order to retrieve data from Eloquent, we get to make sure that we do something with our specific ID right here. And it's actually a lot easier than you might think. So what we can do right here is to find a new variable called post and let's set it equal to the post model, colon, colon. And whenever you want to retrieve one specific row, you simply need to add the find method. The find method accepts one required parameter, which will be the variable ID, which is coming from the URL. So let's say dollar sign ID. Now what we can do is simply DD our variable post. All right, save it, navigate to the browser. And right after our forward slash block, let's add a ID of let's say 150. Right here, you'll see that we retrieved one single row. If we open the original array right here, 
you specifically see that the ID is equal to 150, which is coming from the URL. Now, if we change our route parameter to 205, which we don't have, you'll see that we are receiving a null, which is something that we actually don't want. The find method works fine, right? Pretty much what we're doing right here. But retrieving one single row can be done a lot cleaner by appending the or fill right after the find. The biggest difference right here is that the find or fail method will throw an exception if there are no matching results. If we navigate back to Google Chrome, refresh our endpoint, you'll see that we're receiving a 404, which is the page that you want to show a user if the route parameter doesn't exist. Now let's say that we want to change it back to 150. You'll see that the output is exactly what we want. Before we move on, let's quickly clean up our show method like we did with our index method. Let's remove our DD and let's return a view to the, let's say, block.show page. We're going to pass in a variable. So let's add an array and hit enter. We've got a key value pair where the key is post and the value is equal to dollar sign post. Obviously, this can be done a lot easier by copying the value of our post and replacing it with our value inside our array. Then we can also delete our variable post at the top and we're done. Now let's quickly test this out inside of the browser. So inside the blog folder, let's create a new file called show.blade.php. And what we can do right here is basically adding curly braces and saying that we want to print out our variable post. If we save it, navigate back to the browser, refresh it, we got a undefined variable, so probably a typo. All right, I can already see it. It's not a comma, it's an access operator. Navigate back, refresh it. And as you can see, we retrieved one single row where the ID is equal to 150. This was it for this video where we dived into retrieving data with Eloquent. There are tons of other methods that you could use to retrieve data with Eloquent. And I tried to show you most of the common ones. If you are interested in the rest, I'll be linking it in the description down below. If you do like my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.